Okay, so for this week's assignment, what we're going to be working on is we're going to be creating a vision board. Now, if you want to make this by hand, by cutting it, pictures out of a piece of paper and gluing them onto another surface, if you want to draw pictures first and then cut those out and layer those, that's up to you. But one option available to you is to use the Photopea imaging program. And I will be showing you how to do that in a minute. But first, we need to go ahead and talk about what it is to make a vision board. A vision board is a visual collage where you take a bunch of images and words and information and combine them together to make one solid art piece that shows what your goals are. Now, your goals can be long term goals, such as life goals, or they can be short term goals. So maybe you want to learn how to knit. Or maybe you want to learn how to crochet, or maybe you want to paint a picture. Whatever you want to do, you want to consider what your goals are, whether you, it's something short term like this or long term like a life goal. Like in my case, a long term goal would have been turning into becoming a teacher. I became a teacher. Now here I am. Uh, maybe it's a short term goal. Maybe you want to finish a video game. And you maybe you want to start another thing. Maybe you want to read a book. You want to include all of your goals into this assignment. Think about what you want to accomplish, whether it's in your life or whether it's in, in something short term and small. Now, once you're ready to move on and you're ready to actually work on it, if you want to make yours online, you're going to go to photopia.com. Now, the link is down here at the bottom. Go to photopia.com and it's going to look like this. Now, on the left hand side of the screen, you're going to have the paint brush so you can paint stuff on there and you're going to have the crop tool. Unfortunately, I don't have access to those because those are behind the controls for the recording program. So I can't really use those specifically. But I wanted to go ahead and show you a general rule on how you can make a vision board without even having to use those. Now, you would go to new. And you just select one of these little suckers. You don't have to use one of these. You don't have to use the words. You can delete the words later. What you decide to do is up to you in terms of that factor. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just scroll through, find one that I think is interesting to look at. I don't really like any of these, but I'm going to pick one. There, whatever, close enough. OK, now. One of the things that I'm going to go ahead and point out, this one, when I clicked it, I did not change the setting specifically of what I wanted. So I'm going to go back to new. And on the left hand side, you're going to click print, not social, because social means that you're going to be putting it online. You want to go to print and you want to click letter. That's going to make it nice and big. And it's going to be something that you'd be able to print from the computer. Now, if you wanted it sideways, there are options for you to go sideways but I'd rather you work in this format just so you can really see how it works. Now I'm gonna go ahead and select a new one. And what I'm going to do after I've selected the, the screen, this allows it to already have a colored background. You don't have to worry about the background anymore too, too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and just randomly select one that I just find somewhat interesting to look at and I'm going to go with this one now. OK, you can keep the words, you can change the words, you can leave the words. That's up to you. You would just double click right here and it would allow you to edit the words. I don't you I don't really feel like let's see. You just click the word, you click the word button. I don't really feel like doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and trash these. Click the layer, trash it. You're going to what you're going to do next. You're going to click new layer. And you can click however many layers you want. I'm going to go ahead and go six layers for now. Click the bottom layer, find an image that you like. I'm going to go ahead and go with, which ones do I want for the back? And go with this one. Copy the image. And then you're going to go edit and paste. You don't want to do control V because of the fact that what's going to happen is that If you click control V, it's going to paste extra large and it's not going to fit into the template that you have. I'm going to go ahead and put this right here and I'm going to rotate that one just a little bit. I'm going to place it right there in the corner. And then I'm going to go ahead and close that tab because I don't need that anymore. I'm going to 
get this one, copy image. And I didn't draw any of these, so I am not claiming any of them. Okay, so these are not my art pieces. I am just including them because they have a significance to what to the things that I want to accomplish. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this one another direction. They just have something to do with different accomplishments that I want to make. I'm going to click another layer. And every time I change layers, I choose a different image. Copy image. Paste. Now, let's say you, when you paste it and you don't, let's say you don't have, let's say you don't have the transformation case. So I'm going to go ahead and click select. If you, if you put, paste an item and it doesn't have the little squares in the corners, you just come up here, you click the, you click this one right here, the little arrow, you click your object and then you click transform controls. That allows you to do the transformations and change the direction. And when it has the little double arrows, that means it's going to change. That's going to change the angle of the object. So I'm almost done adding images with the actual images themselves, and then I'm going to start adding smaller objects. Um, it doesn't have to necessarily be like this. You can place how yours however you want. But this is just what the things that I want to add to mine. And some of you will notice that it's not going to match the one that I have on, on the classroom. And that's specifically because of the fact that I'm having to redo this. OK, so I'm going to go on one more layer. I'm going to start adding objects. So this is the next part. This part's a little bit tricky. Because what I want to do, I don't want that white space. One option that you have available to you is if you go up here and you go to select and you go to and you click magic cuts. What's going to happen is it's going to select the background. So if it has a solid colored background, it will select everything around your object and then you can go ahead and click enter. I'm going to move this over so I can click OK. And it's going to delete a large portion of that background. You can delete other ones and other parts, but I want to make sure that I can still see some of it. Um, because that white kind of how, helps it to pop out a little bit. I'm going to close this one. And close this one. And this one. Okay, so I'm running, a, I'm running low on images now. I'm going to go ahead and go in and I'm going to I'm going to go through that and I, I selected specifically a few that would need to use that magic cut just so you can see how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and make this nice and big. Select magic cut and usually it will select the background automatically. Now you can either select it so that it goes to a new layer or you can just click OK. And you can place your object wherever you want it. I'll go ahead and place it right there. Now, notice I'm starting to run out of layers a little bit. That's okay. As you go through, it's going to get easier and easier to really fill that space in. Select metric cuts. Notice it cut off the tip and I don't want it to cut off the tip right there. So you can just select right here and it'll just add those spaces just a little bit further in and it'll add those pieces that you're missing. And you can click this little arrow to make the size of your, your brush on here a little bit smaller. That'll allow you to have a little bit more control about what is being selected. And obviously it doesn't have to be perfect. You guys are in middle school. I don't expect it to be.
and it's missing part of the finger here. Get that there. You just try to place these little green lines in the spaces that you want it to be. When it's close enough, you just click OK. And then you can move these into the space that you want it to be. So I want it to go ahead and have it sideways. I think this way could be fun. Just kind of place it wherever you find it interesting. And you can make it bigger or smaller. I'm going to go ahead and make this one a little bit smaller now because it's taking way too much space. There we go. And trust me, it can get weird. That's okay. That's kind of part of the point. Now, I wanted to go ahead and show you what happens when the image that you're using has a black background instead of a white background. I'm going to go ahead and put paste. And it pasted it to a new layer. Sometimes that happens. That's fine. You can always delete extra layers later. Now, I'm going to go ahead and click Select Magic Cuts. And what's going to happen is it's going to select different ranges. Now, this one, it was pretty good. And it selected, a, for the most part, the majority of the actual object. Um, I do want to go ahead and shift a little bit. That's in, It's important that you make sure that the colors that you choose and that you that are completely different from each other. Because if they all look the same, it's not going to help you. Click OK. Use that little guy there. And then once you have finished, you're going to go with layer. You're going to scroll all the way down to flatten image. That's going to take the entire thing and condense it into one solid image. OK. And then you're going to go file. Export as JPG. And that's where you're going to be saving it. You're going to make sure to go up to 100. Make sure you go all the way to 100. And then you can click Save. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, and I will be posting another assignment next week.